Video games are a very important part of our life and also they're a very, very important expression of human creativity. From our viewpoint as design curators, we look at them as examples of interaction design. My name is Paola Antonelli. I work at the Museum of Modern Art. I organize exhibitions, mostly of contemporary design, and also augment the collection of the museum with uh, contemporary design objects. Criteria for inclusion in a collection are never like a recipe that you follow. They're more like checkpoints. You know, for instance, uh, like any kind of design, we're dealing with form. But it's not about prettiness or realism. It's more about the aesthetic intention. Tempest is a center perspective shooter game. It's 1981, so it's the beginning of video game design and there are all these different levels that are different both visually and navigationally. It's my favorite because it's so simple. It's made, as my mom would say, it's made with nothing, like a very good Italian dish, you know, and still it accomplishes so much. Another really important criterion is space. You know, games are spatial experiences, they are about inhabiting worlds or inhabiting rooms. SimCity, of course, is one of the no-brainers. I mean, if you're trying to acquire video games as a form of design, how can you not think about SimCity first? It is about design. It's about designing a city. So it's about design, architecture, urban planning. It's the moment where you start being able to actually feel a seed of community and not simply urban planning in two dimensions. And then, last but not least, is behavior. Game designers and interaction designers at large are designers of behavior. They are designing how the machine behaves and how humans behave when they interact with the machine. Pac-Man is here because it's an example of interaction design. And it's about survival in a maze that is apparently two-dimensional, but in truth, it immediately becomes fifth-dimensional. I don't think that there's anybody that thinks of Pac-Man as a flat game. It's also how scared it makes you much more scared than more realistic games that we've been playing with. You really are fearing for your life. In order for people to understand how important video games are, I had to take them out of the living room, I had to take them out of the arcade, and I need to put them here with very stark walls, and I only will leave the controller, the screen, the interaction, that's it. By doing so, I thought I could actually highlight the interaction. Hello, I mean, how could it not be here? This is the most obsessive compulsive game ever. It's amazing because it's dexterity, it's space, it's strategy. There's very few art critics that criticize vehemently this acquisition. Oh, Picasso and Pac-Man cannot be in the same space. Well, first of all, I might remind these art critics that in his own time, there were many people that were as outraged by his art as they are outraged right now by the presence of video games within the Museum of Modern Art. We live in a space that is a melting of the physical and the digital. I mean, so, in a way, Interaction design is the membrane between the two worlds, a membrane that is very, very porous. And that's why it is our job as curators of the Museum of Modern Art to consider this particular dimension.